on everybody this is island hopper tv and today we're going to talk about the best things to do while visiting taipei taiwan let's do it that's right everybody we're going to show you the top things to do while visiting here in taipei there will be timestamps below so you can bounce around from location to location let's go ahead and get into it and first up we're headed to taipei 101 at the time of its completion in 2004 it was the world's tallest building standing 508 meters that's 1667 feet that includes the spire at the top it did hold this record until 2010 when the burj khalifa in dubai was completed and the basic ticket to go to the 89th floor is 600 taiwanese dollars for adults Next up, we're headed over to the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. This is actually considered one of the iconic landmarks here. He was the former president of the Republic of China, which is now Taiwan. At this location, you'll find the National Concert Hall as well as the National Theater. The Memorial Hall is located inside at Liberty Square, which is a large open area that is considered a hub for festivals and large gatherings. Okay, now here we are at Elephant Mountain. This is actually a hike to the top of this peak right here in the city. The reason people typically hike Elephant Mountain is to get the panoramic views overlooking Taipei skyline, including a good look at Taipei 101. It's typically a 20 to 30 minute hike. The National Taiwan Museum is actually the oldest museum here in the Republic of China, also known as Taiwan, dating all the way back to when Japan ruled over Taiwan. For over 40 years that happened actually. This museum here is not to be confused with the National Palace Museum. It's a bit smaller and it's located in Zhongzheng District. The history of Taiwan is quite fascinating, so the more you know, the more educated you can become about what's going on in the world today. Now here we are at the Longshen Temple, which is actually one of the oldest temples in Taipei, originally established in 1738 by settlers from Fujian, China. The temple is dedicated to a variety of deities, including Guan Yin, who is the goddess of mercy, as well as Buddha. Some interesting history I'll tell you real quick. The actual nation as we know it, Taiwan, was originally founded by the ROC in 1912. Taiwan was under... Taiwan was a colony of the Netherlands for about 40 years in the mid-17th century. Fast forward to 1895, it became a colony of Japan under the Treaty of Shimonoseki when the Qing Dynasty handed over Taiwan to Japan. But in 1945, after World War II, Japan surrendered Taiwan to the actual ROC, the Republic of China. Not to be confused with the CCP, which is called the Chinese Communist Party, which is located in Beijing. Now we're going to head about 30 minutes north of Taipei to the Shifin Old Town, where you release these Kongming lanterns, also known as Chinese lanterns, into the sky, made from paper and bamboo. They're filled with hot air from an open flame underneath, and on the outside, you write affirmations that you would like to send up into the heavens. Each color of paper that you write your affirmations has a different significance. The area north of Taipei is very interesting. They have many different waterfalls like this one. And up here you can see, it's got some waterfalls cascade right into the ocean here. And the reason the water is that color is because this is actually very mineral rich soil. Next up is Ju Fen. This is a must see. I highly recommend going to this village, especially in evening time. It is known for its fog and great views overlooking the ocean towards the north, but it was an old gold mining town and a Japanese colony during a prosperous era of the 20th century. When you come up here, make sure you walk the old street of Ju Fen at night. Next up, let's talk about local food. Taiwanese sausage. Okay, this is a Taiwanese meatball here. It's a red meatball, actually. Alright, so we got some duck head, some duck tongue, some gizzards, some duck neck, chicken feet. Well, I am trying the chicken feet still. I'm not so sure if I like it or not. I don't know. Well, they got some barbecue steak here. This is going to be torched. Let's try it on the barbecue. What a show. And that was just absolutely delicious. That is kimchi, Taiwanese. And we got some fried chicken here. A little bit of like mayo sauce, it looks like. Some chili, broccoli. 
This is actually called pork bone soup. This is tom yum noodle with pork. Interesting. It's like a laksa home. All right, I got a seafood soup here with noodle. Got some shrimp, some shellfish, and then some pork. One of the most popular places to go and try street food is going to be Rauhi Street Market. This is a night market that takes place basically every night, assuming weather allows, because they do get plenty of typhoon activity out here in Taipei and all across Taiwan, really. Food isn't the only thing they serve here, but it's the main attraction that's made this place clearly the best night market in Taipei. There are a few that we'll show you, actually. Now here we are riding the MRT which stands for Mass Rapid Transit. Now, Metro Taipei is considered one of the best metros in the world, operated and run by the government-owned company, Taipei Rapid Transit Corporation. There's five different lines and over 117 stations, averaging over 2.1 million passengers per day. That's incredible. Next up, I recommend riding the Taiwan High Speed Rail. It goes over 350 kilometers per hour. That's very fast. The travel time from Taipei in the north to Kaohsiung in the south is 90 minutes. If you do want to ride the HSR here in Taiwan, just go on to Google and search for the nearby station. And now here we are at Diwa Street. This is a popular street to walk at night, but we're showing up here a little bit earlier than that. It's around three o'clock in the afternoon. The old street here is definitely of historical significance located in the heart of Taipei. The street has preserved traditional architecture as it was a major trading hub for the Qing dynasty, including Chinese medicines, herbs, textiles, and traditional foods, popular with locals and tourists alike. There's also an ancient temple here called the City God Temple. From here, we're headed to Jaimen. This is a trendy shopping and entertainment district known for its youthful atmosphere. The road's often called Zaiman Ding, which is the full name. While here, consider trying Taiwanese fried chicken with brown sugar boba milk. I would compare this to Shibuya in Tokyo, or even go so far as to call it the Times Square of Taiwan. If you're really looking for the modern essence of Taipei, this is where you need to go. And if you're loving this video so far, I would recommend you check the description below because we made a Tokyo Things to Do video as well as Hong Kong, which I encourage you to watch both of those next. Also, while you're in Jaiman Ding, I do recommend checking out the Red House Theater. This is also called Low Red Playhouse. There is free admission and people like to come here and just take a picture in front of the structure. And if you're looking to get high in the sky, you got to check out the Miramar Ferris Wheel. This is out here at the Miramar Mall a popular place in northern Taipei where they also have an IMAX theater. Now here we are at the National Palace Museum. This is one of Taiwan's most iconic cultural institutions with over 700,000 items ranging from paintings to calligraphy, ceramics, and other historical relics from mainland China. Like these imperial glass snuff bottles, they're impressive especially the ones that are made out of jade. So this National Palace Museum has a lot of art and history here, like snuff. I didn't really know much about snuff, but now I do. Aside from learning about snuff, you also learn about jade and the importance of jade in Chinese culture. Known as the Stone of Heaven, it's also considered a lucky stone. That's why they are always wearing jade bracelets and necklace. The saying is, gold is valuable while jade is priceless. Now here we are at the Taipei Performing Arts Center. It's known for its unique spherical design outside of the actual theater, which holds around 800 seats in the Grand Theater and is an asymmetrical shaped building with 1,500 seats. Just down the street from the Taipei Performing Arts Center is the actual Shillin Market. This is another very popular market where you can get street food and walk around and enjoy the traditional vibes. There's around 30 night markets around the Taipei area and around Taiwan itself, there's about 70 of them. So these night markets are very popular. I'm not gonna name them all here, but Shillin and Rahi is definitely two that you should consider. Just some interesting facts about Taiwan. It's often confused with Thailand, so don't get that confused. Also, it's the most mountainous island in the world. So lots of mountains out here in Taiwan.
In fact, there are several national parks worth checking out here if you love nature. Taroko National Park is one that I would suggest. And for those of you who want to try a Taiwanese indoor gaming center, try Meow Planet. This isn't your average gaming center. This is actually where you go to try and get groceries for an affordable price using one of these claws. It sure is a fun way to get groceries, but I'm not convinced you save money. See, people are grabbing the shopping bins to do their shopping. <laughs> Kids love it. Well, if you love noodles, you definitely gotta come to one of these places because you can get a good deal if you're lucky enough to uh, get it for 10 cents. Let's just say I tried several times to get these Pringles and had zero luck. So I don't know how good these claws are, but for me personally, I'm not any good at it. I mean, really, how do you grab a box of chocolates like that with a claw? Next up is actually the Nanya Night Market. This is actually one of my favorite night markets in all of the town. It is in New Taipei City, right next to Meow Planet. Now for my final thoughts on Taipei, I would recommend you come here for around three to four days to explore. Getting out in the nature, going to the smaller villages in the north where they did the mining, and then just hanging out down in the city center for about a day or two doing the night markets. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Also watch our Hong Kong and Tokyo videos next here by clicking those videos on the end screens.